nothing with you, and uh, I'm, I'm intrigued about this new book that you have, Remy. Uh, and, uh, but before we go into the book, let's talk about you, your background, you know, the usual question would be, who is Remy Brown? So, <clears throat> Remy Brown is the person that everyone knows in St. Martin as Calvin Brown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That, that, that struck me because, you know, I know you as Calvin. Yes, yes. Grammy? Okay. I so, Calvin is a home name. My mom used to call me Callie. Okay. And my sister still call me, calls me Cal. Mm -hmm. um, and so, once I came to St. Martin, because in Stateship, um, people call me Grammy. Because you go to school there, people know yeah. your, your Christian name, your right. real name. Right. And, um, but there was also a lot of teasing. And so they were just like, Gramni and Gromo. <laughs> and so when That's I came to St. Martin, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I came to St. Martin, I just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to eliminate all that nonsense and just go with the other name, Calvin. Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. Now, uh, is this your first book? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. And what prompted you to, to write this? What was the motivation? Um, I met a guy at, um, at a car dealership, the Lexus car dealership and he wrote a book mm -hmm. and we're talking about you know backgrounds and stuff like that and I told him that I want to get into now mentoring the next generation mm -hmm. as someone had mentored me and he said well you know he worked with some at-risk youths and stuff like that and so and he wrote a book mm -hmm. and he said you know it's not that difficult da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. and then I talked to other friend of mine Jan Willem um, mm -hmm. and he's like because he he has a trans translation app where I, because I don't type like da 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 right. I two fingers tap tap tap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so he said, well, just just speak it, record it, and yeah. then he'll translate it into text. Okay. And then send it back. Um, it, it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. It turned out it wasn't as efficient because now, you know, it requires his time, it requires my time. Okay. And he said, you know what, just, just sit behind the computer and just do it. Mm -hmm. and just tell your story and eventually mm -hmm. you'll have enough story. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having a white paper, you right. have a book. Right. Well, here's the book. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is called Learning the Business of Life. Yes. Learning the Business, business. of Life. Now, how do you, you know, connect the learning and the business in life? So at 14, um, I met a man who introduced himself as Uncle Bill. And that's what I called him. He was known on the island of Stacia as mm. Uncle Bill. Yeah. And I talk about him in the book. Um, almost half the book is our interactions. Okay. And, and how important it is to, for the older generation to mentor the younger ones. Okay. Um, and he said he, he, said he, be, he always believed that the business and life were one and the same. Okay. Um, you couldn't separate them. So I got that from him and I believe him. Mm -hmm. And so I've lived my life that way and my mind was tuned that way ever mm -hmm. since. Mm -hmm. That business and life was one and the same. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed in business, you must succeed in life. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed in life, you have to treat life as a business. Okay. Okay. And, uh, but life is, uh, a lifetime business, isn't it? It is. You are the business. Okay. So before anything, you must learn to manage and take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, your life is going to fail. Mm -hmm. The same applies to any business you have, whether it's a small business, a medium business, mm -hmm. a big business. Mm -hmm. If you don't take care of it, mm -hmm. it's going to fail. Right. You need income. Mm -hmm. The moment you leave your parents' house, mm -hmm. All your bills are yours. Mm -hmm. All the responsibilities are yours. Financially, personally, mm -hmm. you get a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need income. Yeah. If you have a business, you don't get income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. can't pay your expenses. It fails. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right. You 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 said earlier that uh, you know you were mentored, and now you're trying to mentor other young Others, people. Yes. Right? Is this book uh, targeting a specific demographic? Yes. So, as you see the photos on the book, the, the photo on the top, um, that's me learning basically to walk. 
Really? Okay. And the second picture is where the book starts. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the last picture is where I am now. Mm -hmm. And then you flip it, and the picture on the back is where the book ends. Okay. That's the, the person you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so I was targeting 12 yeah. years and older mm -hmm. because there's, a, there's plenty that adults and, and grandparents and parents can learn mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. in terms of where they think they fail and if someone had mentored them, mm -hmm. how far they would have been mm -hmm. and the setbacks they had, how they could have avoided them. Mm -hmm. And then for them to reflect and see how they could avoid them for their children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we can learn from the book, we can learn through experiences mm -hmm. and, and we learn from others and others' mistakes. Yeah. And, and the more we grow and the more we learn for ourselves and the more we know what works and does not work, mm -hmm. we have a responsibility to pass that on mm -hmm. to the next generation mm -hmm. because every generation should do better than the one that okay. came before it. Okay. Now, um, you grew up in Station. I grew up in Station. How was life like when you were growing up? So I was born in St. Kitts, okay. and my mom, she m m married Montero Cotal, mm -hmm. and so we migrated to Stacia. So I, w I was there from since I was six years old. Okay. Um, and yeah, Stacia is like a small community, it's the community vibe. Mm -hmm. So when you hear the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. Stacia is that. Okay. You know, um, everyone knew everyone. Mm -hmm. You had to say good morning to everyone. You. Mm -hmm and see and pass. Mm -hmm. If you did not, mm -hmm. um, your parents would know about it. It's, it was disrespectful and you would be reprimanded. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that as a, a polite word. <laughs> 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 you know? yeah. um, so that's what it was. Um, but it's very small. Like I said, everyone knew everyone. And, and, and um, yeah, that was station. There was two schools, one police station, but I think four police officers. And, you know, um, <laughs> Has it changed? Um, there's more police officers. <laughs> <laughs> there's also some more schools. Okay. And in, in doing some research, because I say in the book, growing up there was about 2,000 people. Right. And then we're talking like 40 years after. Right. So I looked on the website to see what the population was. Right. It was 2,300. <laughs> so, and it was a 300. <laughs> so the growth of 300 people. <laughs> wow. I was like, no, this can't be right. I think they didn't update their website for a while. <laughs> so I called my cousin because he works in the tourism depart right. department and was on the tourist web website. Right. So I say, what's the population of Stacia? He said, uh, about 20 to 2300. <laughs> I'm like, really? How can I it? And he said, plenty of people that go does not come back. Right. And then those sometimes who come, they yeah. stay for a while and then they go. So you have that revolving door. Yeah. So you probably have more stations outside station than you have inside. Possibly, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, that's fascinating to, to, to know that in 40 years, you know. But historically, though, station's population was even much higher than that during the slavery period. Yes, and it, it, was, it was kind of a warehousing island. Um, yeah. Down in the bay, there was all those warehouses where they warehouse slaves, they warehouse ammunition, they warehouse guns. Mm -hmm. um, the U.S. actually, um, during the British, the Civil War, mm -hmm. got ammunition and stuff from Stacia, mm -hmm. which was then, you know, shipped and smuggled away to the U.S. so they mm -hmm. could fight. Okay. And then Stacia paid the price for it yeah. because the Brits sent someone to just yeah. bomb the entire bay front. So, yeah. 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 Little piece of history there. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, it, it's interesting to, to, to see how, you know, you're talking about growing up in a small community, in a small, you know, uh, quote unquote village, uh, that in two generations, uh, nothing much has changed in terms of the numbers. No, you know, no, no. Yeah, that, that's, that's very interesting. But in this book, you know, learning the business of life, you know, um, what would you say are the most important uh, lessons that you learned growing up in the station? Um, one, 
um, in the beginning, so my mom was um, she was a very disciplinary person, mm -hmm. so she didn't spoil the rod. She didn't mm -hmm. spare the rod to spoil the child. Right. And so discipline was one of the foremost. Mm -hmm. uh, discipline, respect. Um, I tell a story about in third grade where um, my report card. She came to pick up my report card, you know, and the teacher told her um, I have had good grades, but I talked a lot. Sometimes mm -hmm. it was disruptive, mm -hmm. and she just took off a slipper right there. And she just <laughs> 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 I got so much to school to talk. <laughs> <laughs> And then when we go home, you're gonna get the rest. <laughs> yeah. And and back then you we we walked just about everywhere. Right. So that 15 minute walk home, wow. you know, was, oh my god, you know. And then she had two rules when it comes to behavior. Um, no notes from the teacher asking her to come to the school mm -hmm. because she would come with a belt. Yeah. And no complaint from anyone on the street that I was misbehaving or, or yeah. being disrespectful. So that's the disciplinary and the behavior part. Um, friendly, um, in Stacia you basically said hello to just about everyone, regardless of who they were, especially the elder. Um, there was a lot of respect for elders. Um, 13, 14, I was like a handy boy, you know, doing little odd jobs for the seniors, cleaning the yard, hosing down the garage, the porch, storeroom. Um, Supermarket shopping, uh, fun fact, back then, most of the store owners, probably except for two, was Seventh-day Adventists. Okay. So on Saturdays, everything, actually from Friday at sundown, everything closed. That's it. You know? Yeah. And then they opened again Saturday at sun, sundown. So mm -hmm. the big grocery shopping was done Saturday night. Night. Okay. <laughs> so that was something. It's strange now. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, by fifth grade, we, I had a principles of business class, okay. and that's when my mind got tuned to business. business. And mm -hmm. in, in the book, it's a story called Discovery. It's me discovering business. business. Okay. And it was basically John John bought an apple for one giller. He mm -hmm. sold it for a giller ten. He made a mm -hmm. ten cents profit. Mm -hmm. And the idea of business was to make a similar profitable transaction mm -hmm. and if you can do it every second of every minute of every hour of every mm -hmm. day of every week of every month of every mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. you increase your chances of a very profitable business mm -hmm. and so for me that was like wow I could do that mm -hmm. you know so that was the first business um, bullying mm -hmm. yeah I got in trouble mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I end up locked in a cell um, yeah I end up in jail basically mm -hmm. Uh, the first time I was 12 years old, and, and then the second time I was 16, and, and, and then... I can imagine how your mother reacted to that. Oh, oh, phew. Um, first is imagine how I reacted. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first time, um, so in Stacia growing up, you went home in my school, the Golden Rock School, mm -hmm. you went home at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. right? And you... You could shower, you could eat, you come back to school, and okay. then school started from one until three. Yeah. So this incident happened in the morning. Mm -hmm. So at 12 o'clock, I did not come home. I was already in trouble. Right. <laughs> right. And then by three o'clock when school ended, I still was home, so I was in more trouble. Right. <laughs> and five o'clock when the police was, says, okay, I'm gonna take you home now, you know, da 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 Long story short, I'm gonna take you home. I became really scared right. <laughs> because I imagine that my mom was just home what? on the porch with a belt <laughs> right across the lap. <laughs> so I asked the, the police officer, can I go home with you instead? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was that. Was that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you're in business now, I'm sure. Yes. Well, now I'm retired, basically. I retired three years ago. Um, you never retire from business. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so my new thing now is to be a life coach, mentoring young one, younger people, inspiring, you know, and showing the, 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 the young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And writing this book, I, I, I realized that my mind was basically tuned to be an entrepreneur from a very young age. Okay. Um, by 22, I wanted to be, I was in the Dutch Marines, and, mm -hmm. and 
my sergeant major, his brother was the head of the police school at, this, at that time. Okay. And so I said, I decided I'm going to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. And I got in, I made the tests, um, and so I was accepted. Mm -hmm. But then I came back to St. Martin first, mm -hmm. and on the first opportunity, cell phones. Mm -hmm. Once I went there, yeah. um, I was just focused, and it was, <laughs> I did never look back. Yeah. And so I didn't end up becoming the police officer, but <laughs> business, I guess, was the first thing. Right. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. here, here we are. <laughs> That's interesting. That's good. Now, um, the, the book itself, uh, where can people uh, buy it? Um, it's, it's in all the local bookstores. Um, so we got uh, Video Block in Fetch Quarter. Mm -hmm. We got Adolphus Richardson, Office Supply. We have the Flagon bookstore across from the Petro Plus gas station. Yeah, that's on the Bush Road. That's on the Bush Road. Yeah. We have Family Bookstore right here mm -hmm. on Camino Richardson Street. Yeah. And Van Dobbs in Simpson Bay and in at and Oh, okay. So, right. And the book is only $20. Okay. Um, it's listed $19.99. <laughs> but if the store doesn't have a penny, um, you know, we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, have you had anybody, you know, review or give you some feedback on the book yet? Yes, I've had, um, I've had three people who read it like in one day. Wow. They said once they got it, they couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. It was, it was very, and one lady is in Anguilla, um, mm -hmm. Brie Theodore. She had mm -hmm. a book as well. Okay. Um, and she released her book and she says, Calvin, you know, the book, and, and, and it came out exactly the way I hoped it would. Mm -hmm. That there was no single story that bogged it down. Mm -hmm. You can read it and you flow right to it. Mm -hmm. um, I told my editor I wanted to keep it in mm -hmm. my voice. Mm -hmm. So it's it's basically written in, in Caribbean, simple Caribbean English, okay. so to speak. I don't know if yeah. that's a, yeah. a correct term, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. written in the way we speak and understand mm -hmm. and communicate. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And then um, there's those who, who said um, it's very informative, yeah. they got a lot of information from the book. So sorry, you have to. We're live. <laughs> um, they got plenty of information from the book. Mm -hmm. And two people said, okay, now it all makes sense mm -hmm. of who you are, why you are so driven, why you are so intense, why mm -hmm. you, you, just, you just do whatever you do. And then by the time we're like, okay, but why didn't you do that first? Or why? That's not the way I function because okay. I'm mm -hmm. just cute a little, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. differently. Um, mm -hmm. But anything you want to accomplish, and I say it all the time, your dreams are yours. And mm -hmm. if you have your dreams, mm -hmm. you you have to pursue them. Yeah. And you have to be persistent. You have to commit. You have to be determined. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't accomplish your dreams for yourself, mm -hmm. then they don't get accomplished. Right. There's nobody out there trying to accomplish your dreams for you. For you. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a thing. No, Human work. beings don't behave yeah. that way. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't work. You know, so, so whatever it is that you believe in, and, mm -hmm. and whatever it is you want to become, whatever it is you want to do, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. And it just requires you to make start with the first step. Mm -hmm. Because until you make the first step, yeah. you're standing still. That's true. <laughs> now, um, let me ask you this. Uh, Younger people today, you know, there's this perception at least that uh, they they don't read or don't read enough. Yeah, they they read, but it's the content that they read. Okay. Because I'm a lifelong reader, mm. but I'm not the novel reader. Okay. I read a lot of papers. I read a lot of articles. Mm. Um, and I think part of it is attention span. Right. So my attention span is probably a little bigger than theirs. Yeah. They read a lot of five lines, mm -hmm. and then they react to it. Yeah. While I would read the entire page, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they react to the headline, mm -hmm. and it's 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 to more and more get them to read past the headline. And, and if they read past the headline, there's so much more information. Right. And then most of their reaction mm -hmm. would be completely different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But now it's all about 
react to this, mm -hmm. this little piece. Mm -hmm. And so time when, when someone sends me something, I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, I don't, I don't even understand what this is about. Mm -hmm. And I say, um, what is the context? Mm -hmm. And they look, they text me back as if like I'm talking a different language. Mm -hmm. But that's what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So we need to encourage kids to read more because readers are leaders. Mm -hmm. And, and the more you read and, and the more you can you can absorb the information mm -hmm. is the more you can learn because mm -hmm. that's that's how we learn we learn information mm -hmm. that we either experience we're told mm -hmm. or we consume mm -hmm. is our educational system um, does it encourage young people to grow up into business people into entrepreneurs or does it stifle that uh, you know, I don't know for a fact how the education system in St. Martin is, mm -hmm. but I would say we, we do have an environment mm -hmm. that doesn't encourage entrepreneurship enough. Okay. So in my book, I speak about the five ways a person can increase their chances in life. Mm -hmm. I was taught that at 16. Mm -hmm. One of those five ways, only two of them takes you to college. Okay. The other three mm -hmm. doesn't. Um, and I've said to a couple of people who, you know, they go to college, they want to get a good job, da, 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 and then they want to be an entrepreneur. And I said, if you want to be an entrepreneur, don't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to do in college is learn whatever they, you're going to study, and you're going to get a good job. Mm -hmm. Except if you're a lawyer, a dentist, a doctor, you know, that's, you know. Um, I picked the fifth out of the five ways. And that way was finish high school, mm -hmm. you go out in the real world, you learn as many things as you possibly can, mm -hmm. and the one that you can do the best mm -hmm. and you love the, m most. the most, put them together, make a business, mm -hmm. work hard, save, mm -hmm. retire, and live well. Okay. That's what I chose. Okay. Except I dropped out of school at 16. <laughs> <laughs> But I pursued that anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I had three different jobs in the first year after school. I worked mm -hmm. as a chef with the grill chef, Super mm -hmm. Burgers and Stacia. I work uh, in department store, Indian department store, right mm -hmm. across the street from the, the, the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then I worked in construction. Okay. And then I came to St. Martin, right. you know. And, and so by 23, I had my own business. I was a full-fledged entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I left a casino job. I was making mm -hmm. like... $2,000 a month, and we're talking back in 1993. Mm -hmm. My first job in St. Martin, I was uh, 17. I worked eight months, mm -hmm. and I saved over $12,000. In eight months? In eight months. Wow. I was making $400 a week, mm -hmm. and my rent was 80 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, but if you don't have the fundamentals mm -hmm. early, right. everything, you know, all, all the good things that come, they just kind of pass through you. Mm -hmm. And you you look back and you, if you really learned a lot, you'll say, man, I wasted so much. Mm -hmm. Whether it's money or you wasted so much time or you wasted so much opportunities. Mm -hmm. And there's a thing where, where my mentor used to say, chance favors the prepared. Mm -hmm. If you're not prepared, mm -hmm. the chances are not going to favor you. Mm -hmm. It's not bad luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You're just not prepared. So even though the opportunity is right there, mm -hmm. you're like, ah, if only I had a hundred dollars right now, yeah. you know what I mean? Or if, well, if only I didn't have to go home right now, or if only my foot wasn't broken off of that, um, um, you know, playing one wheel in that yeah. in the street, or you know. So again, you it's cultivating the mindset. And, and, and basically imagining and seeing yourself as the way you want to go and mm -hmm. then making the steps to achieve mm -hmm. those goals that you have. Mm -hmm. Do you have more books in, in store? Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm busy now with a, a fictional book called Gabriel. Okay. And I have an eight page download on my, on my website for free. Actually it's 12 pages, it's an in introduction and mm -hmm. eight pages of the first chapter. Mm -hmm. And um, it's GrammyBrown.com. Okay. That's G R A M E Y B R O W N E dot com. Okay. And and it's a free down download. Mm -hmm. And the plot is is a young man who's um, he's a police investigator, mm -hmm. and he's a priest. Mm -hmm. 
and and they're taking down everything takes place in Barcelona Spain mm -hmm. I was there in 2018 and I love the place and mm -hmm. so my imagination just That's, yeah. just kind of exactly <laughs> exactly and um, and so in the middle of taking down all these big criminals um, there's an arrest warrant that comes in from him for him from Turkey and he's accused of murdering five people in Turkey and Turkey calls him the angel of death. Yeah. And, and this was, in their country, the crime of the century. Mm -hmm. Except, he was never in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, he gets extra... Is that a case of uh, mistaken identity? <laughs> um, well, we'll find out once the book is completed. <laughs> so he gets extradited to Turkey, and he's found guilty. And he's sentenced to five consecutive life sentences, and he escapes and he jumps on a plane and he gets to the United States, and he's in FBI custody, and that's where the story starts. And so, you know, he tells the FBI, "What if I told you I was never even in Turkey before the crime crimes happened?" And yeah, he started to tell his story from the beginning, mm -hmm. who he is, where he's born, right. you know, and everything's come. Interesting. Yeah. Looking forward to that. So that book, hopefully, I, I want to have it out for June. Okay. But there's a book fair going on in St. Martin yeah. the first week mm -hmm. of June. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I can make that. We also have a vacation plan, so I'm, I'm hoping the conflict. Mm -hmm. I could get my family to just give me that week. If not, then mm -hmm. I'll miss the book fair. Yeah. But the book will be out either way. Okay. And, um, and I'll be back to St. Martin, and then I'll have to do a launch on my own, okay. um, like I did here. So. That'll be interesting. Yeah. That'll be interesting. <laughs> well, congratulations. And, Thank uh, you. Looking forward to that one, and I'll go and sink my teeth in. Yes, that. yes, I'm going to sign it for you, yeah. I'm going to get your name in it, because me and you have some history. It's not in this book, yeah. it's going to be in the next book. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this book is one of three, this is the okay. first of three, so right. this is learning the business of life, right. and the next book will be which takes place all in St. Martin, right. it is pursuing the business of life. life. And wow. the third series will be, after my first retirement, right. living the business of life. Wow. Yeah. That's so, a trilogy. Right? That's a trilogy right there. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Success. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> okay.